But today, our special final event for Lanyap is going to be about Barbershop Quartets, the history of it, and as you can tell, we're going to have a hands-on performance too. So uh, I would, David, David Williams is the person, I don't know where he's the director of it, or whether he has a title, or whether he's just the person that I contacted first. But he's going to talk to us about it, and then we're going to hear some great music. So uh, David will let you know when he wants to have questions, when he wants to entertain that. So uh, please give a great welcome to David Williams and the Barbershop yeah, I'm not the director, I'm just the one that drew the short straw, so I'm going to say it today. Well, these are some great friends of mine. We're all members of the Barbershop Harmony Society, part of the trust of the chapter. Uh, and what we enjoy doing, we get together every week and we sing Barbershop. And so for the next little bit, we're going to sing some. We're going to talk about the history of the society, history of Barbershop, how it all came to be. And we're going to start out as though we were at a rehearsal meeting. And that is, we would sing our first song, uh, which is the old song. So God, let's end up with a sing that for us. about singing the old songs and the normally what the songs we sing are the older songs i say i was born about 50 years too late because i love the music of uh cole porter george gershwin Irving 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 <laughs> so that, that's a chapter joke but those are the songs that i love to sing and so those are the songs that we sing we sing some other ones of course but those are the ones so we sing the old songs and we sing have good close harmony. And the thing about our chapter, we have not only vocal harmony, but we, these are our best friends. Every Thursday, if I have a headache and I go down Thursday night, guess what? By the time I leave, what a headache. You know, I'm done feeling great because we had just a wonderful time together. Uh, and so today we're gonna to talk about the history of the society, history of barbershop, and there will be singing. Because part of our scripture says where there are four or more gathered, Within every 10 minutes, you have to sing a song. <laughs> We're like fish out of water. If we don't sing, then we can become, become very uh, uh, nervous or whatever. But six months ago, if someone asked you to describe barbershop, chances are that you would have thought about this. A place where you go to get your hair, where men get their hair cut, right? In fact, Webster defines it as a barber's place of business. So without this setting, that may be what you thought about. And, and Webster, to their credit, they also say that it is a style of unaccompanied group singing of popular songs, usually marked by highly conventionalized close harmony. That's a fancy wording for what we do, okay? But we do sing, it's a group singing of popular songs, and we do have that close harmony there. It may have been that you might have thought about this painting, the Norman Rockway painting, that was on the Saturday Evening Post on December the 26th, 1936. So that may have been the quartet that you might have thought about. Or you may have thought about this, I Know Lucy. <laughs> you remember the episode where Lucy wanted to sing in a barbershop quartet, but because she was anticipating, as I said back, back then, she couldn't be with him. Well, at least she couldn't sing anyway. So the only thing about a barbershop quartet in that picture, there's four people, and they're kind of like barbers, and they sang after fashion, Sweet Adeline. So the question is, how did it all get started? Well, 
Lately, we've come to find out a lot of this got started with black groups back in the 1890s and 1900s. They would get together and they would sing um, spirituals, folk songs, uh, popular songs of the day. Now, at this time, largely there was no written arrangements. So they would do what we call woodshedding. A person may sing the melody and then the other people put the harmony parts with it. Nothing to, uh, to, to look at, to, as we have now, to look at music. They did it on, on their own. Sometimes they would sing songs, spiritual music, like uh, what we call call and response. There'd be a phrase, the lady singer would sing something and then there was a response. And you might think about the spiritual, were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? So a person would say one phrase and the others would join in. But oftentimes they would sing all in, in harmony once they learned those. Uh, now I want to play for you a recording. And this is of the Tuskegee Institute of Singers that was done in the early 1900s. And you can hear from this recording very basic styles of barbershop. There's no accompaniment to it. It's, it's, it's actually eight guys singing in harmony, and the melody line is the second note above and, and that you'll hear. The top note is the tenor, which is what Tony and I will be singing today. But here's a recording of them singing a part of I Want to Be Ready. So you hear there, there's there's barbershop styles in that, and so from from that, then it began to evolve, and the other groups began to pick it up. Now you ask, well, why is it called barbershop? Well, a lot of times men didn't have social clubs that they could go to and, and things like that, but all the guys went to the barbershop, and so sometimes the barber would start singing a song, and the other guys would pick up on that. Now look at this picture. I'll be honest with you. I can't see this guy singing. <laughs> but maybe, who knows? You, know, you can't tell by that. You never know. But that, that's how it can be called because all the guys went to the barbershop and sometimes the singing would, would begin there. Uh, and it became a very popular uh, method of singing. It's, it has been recognized as a truly American art style of, of, of music. You may not think about that, but it really is. It got to start here in, in the United States. You may also ask, well, what about these colorful costumes that, that, that the guys wear? And there's a reason for that, too. That began back in the 1890s and 1900s because the style of going on then was vaudeville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a It is never too late to join in vaudeville. <laughs> so, so these are some guys, and that's why they would dress, you know, you may have seen them like that. But they would stand in front of these vaudeville curtains. Well, if you were standing back here, and they were way up there, if you wore just gray suits and things, you might get kind of lost in the shuffle. But with those suits and those high pants, you did not get lost. You, you were seen. Now, you may still see some of these costumes around. If any of you ever go to Walt Disney World or to Disneyland, you may have seen the Dapper Dance. And I'll tell you what, you know, if, if you're a barber shopper and you go down there, and after they sing it, finish their set, you can ask them to sing a song with them. I mean, I, I would never do that, would I? <laughs> <laughs> Only every chance I get, okay. But anyway, you can sing a song with them, and it's, it, it is just great fun. If I could have my perfect job singing barbershop as a dapper down on Main Street, does it get much better than that? I mean, I'm not, not the barbershop, but anyway, that's what they would do. But back a few years ago, anyway, Quartets became to be very popular, and some of them were called, this is like the Haydn Quartet, the Peerless Quartet, and the Shannon Quartet. So they all were some of these popular groups uh, in the group, and they were singing the modern and popular songs of the day, such as Sweet Adeline and Shine On Harvest Moon. Now, I talked a while ago about that call and response in, in songs. Sweet Adeline is a perfect example of that. 
Sweet Adeline, sweet Adeline. There you go. See, I just I couldn't take it. It's been nine and a half minutes and they couldn't take it. I had to sing a song. Okay, so, but another song that was popular today is the song that we are going to sing now, and that is entitled My Wild Irish Rose. That's the same up. <laughs> My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. You may search everywhere, but none can compare with my wild Irish rose. Right there, when you, when you clap, that, that just eggs us on for more and more. Okay. okay, so this is the early 1900s and things, but things, but styles began to change as they do from time to time. In the 1920s, Dixieland jazz came to be popular. And so there you see a, a group there of Dixieland jazz musicians, and barbershoppers began to fade back a little bit because the style had changed. Well, in the 1930s, in, in almost every home, there was still a piano. Somebody there who could play, and people would gather around the piano and sing, and they would sing some of these old songs. But like I said, barbershop was losing popularity. This other music was coming along and re replacing it. Well, along comes a man by the name of O.C. Cash, Owen Clifton Cash. He was the son of a Baptist minister, who ran for our side, okay? <laughs> and he was born in a log cabin. It was like somebody else that you heard of, ever heard of. And February the 13th, 1892, this log cabin had actually been rented from a member of the Cherokee Nation. He was born in Missouri. Well, he had an interest in music as just a hobby as he was growing up. And so as he went to school and graduated, went to, to law school from, and graduated from Bacon College, all this time he had an interest in music, but it was not his vocation. He actually enlisted in the army for World War I, but as luck or fate would have it, before he was shipped off, the war ended he did not have to serve. Well, he was employed by the Standard Oil Company there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And as I said, he grew up hearing this barbershop music, and he loved it, but it was fading away in popularity. Well, in 1938, in February 1938, he went to a meeting, a business meeting, at the Hotel Mulewak in Kansas City. And there's another gentleman there by the name of Rupert Hall. He was also uh, from Kansas City. Now, I, I don't know if they, these two knew each other ahead of time or not. I'm not able to find that out. But they began to talk at, at, this, at this meeting. And also, during that time, they had a snowstorm. They were, they, were, they were just couldn't go anywhere. They were there in the hotel. And he and Rupert Hall began to talk about, you know, used to be music was barbershop and we loved it, blah, 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 blah. And they found two other guys. And there that weekend at this hotel, they began to sing barbershop. And they loved it, had a great time. And they decided that when they returned back to Tulsa, they were gonna continue this and somehow they were gonna get, get it done. So that's what they did. They went to, back to Tulsa and they <coughs> sent out this invitation to 14 men to attend a meeting at the Tulsa Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 14 men were invited to the event. 
but 26 guys showed up. And the joke of the day was, says, I know there was 26 guys there because I met 150 of them. In other words, everybody who went to be there at, at the meeting. And th there was nobody from Alabama that I know of at that meeting, but the first song that they sang was about Alabama, and it's entitled Down Mobile. Very standard song, by the way, but nothing fancy with it. We'll see that next. <coughs> Down Mobile, Down Mobile, how I love that little gal of mine, how I love that little gal of mine, Down Mobile, Down Shop history, uh, and they were meeting. Here's a picture of the, of the club there. there that, that's the big meeting they were meeting in the Tulsa Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here's another picture of the outside area where some of them moved over to sing some other barbershop songs. Now, at the bottom of that first invitation was an invitation to come in to join the Society for the Preservation and Propagation of Barbershop Quartet Singing in the United States. They changed that a little bit and they rewarded it to the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. And you may have seen our emblem that was around for years, S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A. Now, the name was created kind of like a joke. This is the 1930s when Franklin Roosevelt was in the White House and you may recall there were several different agencies that he set up that went by initials. There was the CCC, the Civil Conservation Corps. We had one down in Mount where I, I, I lived. I wasn't there in the end, but I, my mom took me there. <laughs> there was the, uh, a TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. There was the NRA, which is different from what we think about now, the National Recovery Act. And in fact, Roosevelt himself went by initials, FDR. And so the guys thought, as a joke, we're gonna set up something with a bunch of initials, and they set up the S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A. Incorporated, okay, and so and, and that went by initials for many many years. They stayed at the Tulsa Hotel for a few weeks, but then they, they outgrew it because after the first meeting, they had 26. The next week there was 70. The next week there was 150. Well, if this keeps on going, you're going to run out of space. And so they moved over to the Alvin Hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, O.C. Cash, this gentleman I told you about a few minutes ago, he was a master at promoting the society. And so, uh, one night that we had a rehearsal there, early in, in the society's history, and the windows were up, and these guys, 150, 100, 200 guys, were singing barbershop, and so cars were coming by, and they were stopping to hear it. All of a sudden, there was a traffic jam about it. So somebody called the police. And we think it was O.C. Cash who called the police to come to the meeting because then it got on the newspaper. And the next day, the Tulsa World said, no, no, folks, you're wrong. That was a musical history in the making. And it really was because the society just began to grow by leaps and bounds. This was on, on May 31st was when they had the meeting and that was the June 1st paper. Papers around the country heard about this. And all of a sudden, they didn't have internet back then, you know, and, but they had the AP and the UPI, and it got spread all over the world. And then all of a sudden, people began to get interested, and chapters were formed all across the United States and including in Canada. Here's some early pictures of some courses there as they were meeting there. Uh, now, as I said a while ago, we had to sing every 10 minutes or else we be we haven't been quite 10 minutes yet, and this has nothing to do with this, but we are going to sing a song now. Sandra, will you come sit over here for a second? I don't sing. Her name is Sandra. Sandra. 
Just like the song I wrote last week. Just like the song. And have another Sandra over here. I know that song. Sandra, if you can last week. We have a song just for this occasion. Just for it. Oh, Sandra, Sandra, bless your heart. Oh, Sandra, that I love so well, so well. I've done it true, my gal, to you. You're the Sandra that I This is a picture of an, of an early uh, contest in the uh, late uh, 30s. And you can see the mass people that were there. Now, we go to competitions a lot. We have one in the spring. We have one in the fall. And then there's an international competition. And we'll talk some more about those in a little bit. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm proud of what our chapter has done in this competition. We, we have a lot of fun when we go to them. Now, one thing they did uh, at this early Early meeting, uh, O.C. Cash invited a guy, you may have heard of Bing Crosby, ever heard of him? <laughs> but they invited Bing to come to, to be a part of the, of, the, of the competition or the, the meeting. Bing said he couldn't come, but he said, I'll tell you what, I'll dedicate a song to you on my radio show, and that's exactly what he did. Because of, of all this coverage in the newspaper and the fun of it and then the joy that the barbershoppers had, the society just grew by leaps and bounds. And pretty soon it passed the United States borders and it was up into Canada. And right now, the, uh, our society is based into all these different districts. You can see that how we, how we divided it up. So our competition covers this group, another group here. They used to be with us, they left, that was their loss. Anyway, but a lot of different groups and organizations around the United States sing, sing barbershop. And by the way, it's not just here in the United States or in Canada. They're also in Canada, Australia, Great Britain, Germany, the Netherlands, Finland, Ireland, New Zealand, Sweden, Southern Africa. All of these folks all around the world singing barbershop. Now we have a guy from our chapter who lives in Germany now, and he sings barbershop over there and in the quartet over there, and they did very well in the competition uh, not too long ago. Now they do sing it in, in the English words. They don't sing it in their native language. They sing the English words and they sing the barbershop songs that we are very familiar with. So that's the society as a whole. But what about our local chapter? Well, our chapter has just celebrated our 50th anniversary. We were initially called the Druid City Singers. And this guy was the director at that time. His name was Ron Davis. Uh, I don't think anybody in this picture is here. No. But we gained our director about 40 years ago, and that was a chance meeting at a university class. And Bobby, I'm going to tell this to you, Timmy, correct me if I'm wrong. Bobby and Ron were studying together at the Choral Union, which is a, a, a choral class at the university. And Bobby told Ron about the barbershoppers and invited him to, to come sing with them. And bless his heart, he did. And two weeks later, he was a director. 1970, <laughs> 1974. 1974. And 130 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and millions of notes. So this is Ron here, and this is Bobby. We're all shades of love, haven't we? And Tom's up here. What? Tom. 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 Tom.
and, and uh, these, this was the, the Heartland Harmonizer. We changed our name, and Ron has directed us for 40 years. Can you imagine doing something? Now we're talking about repenting for 36 years, but he's done that for 40 years, and you know why? Yeah. He loves it. <laughs> and we love him too. I mean, it, it's, it's a special uh, friendship that we have there, and uh, he's stepping back a little bit. Uh, we're not letting him get too far back. Some of those are directing it as well. But, but Ron has, has led us to championship, horse championships. Uh, and you'll see he and Tom are wearing some medals around their necks. They were part, you may have heard the stack deck. I'm sure you have heard. You've heard of the stack deck. Say yes. 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 Okay, all right. Stack deck entertained thousands of, of people around the world, if not millions, I guess. And, uh, and they, they competed in competitions and international, did very well. Competed in the senior <laughs> court as we age, as we mature, you can go into the senior quartet division. And they won some medals for that as well. So we're very thankful for, for their leadership as a quartet and as part of our society and of our chapter. Samuel. You're going to introduce, or let them introduce yourself. I'm not going to introduce you, I might get mixed. I know them all, but I get nervous sometimes. Okay, <laughs> we'll do that right now. So. <laughs> I feel like Phil Donahue. Hey, I am Tony Nichols. I have been a member of this chapter for about 14 years now, and I wish that I had started when some of these old guys did. <laughs> and I see Tenor, and uh, there are several of us in this group that come from Birmingham because these folks are so much fun. Tell us your vocation, too. Uh, well, I'm a retired engineer, and um, so now I just travel and see my grandbabies and say barbershop. <laughs> my name is David Busby. I grew up here in Cottondale. I uh, joined this chorus when I was in high school um, in 75. Um, moved away, have gone all of me. I've lived in Florida and Georgia and come back. And, and um, I retired recently and I'm a music, I'm a music educator and um, I joined, rejoined the chorus. I'm Ron Montgomery, and I, yes, I directed that group, and like I said, I turned sideways for some reason, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, anyway, I will not turn sideways today, by God. Uh, but <laughs> the, um, I did join in, what, 74, 74, and uh, started directing, uh, sang in the stack deck for, for, for a long time. years, I don't know, a long time. <laughs> And we still try to sing as much as we can. I'm a retired teacher, Sandra knows that. I taught sixth grade at Best Avi Elementary in Northport, and then I became the principal. And I retired there and went to ACA with the intentions of staying three years, and I stayed 11. And so I have 40 years of teaching experience, and now I'm retired, but I still do the music at First Christian Church. And I've been there for 46 years, so I can't quit things, I guess. I'm Bobby Wooldridge. Uh, I have got my 50-year membership card in September in this organization, uh, so I've been doing it a while. Uh, I'm from Tuscaloosa. I was a uh, circuit judge here. I was the public defender for 18 years here, uh, and I love singing with these guys. Tell your part. What part? Um, well, so far I've sung lead, bass, and baritone today. So we, we have a chorus of about 20 guys. Uh, so obviously everybody's not here. And also Buzz was late. <laughs> so so uh, some of us were filling in on different parts as we go along. Normally I sing bass with the chorus. My name is Ed Delinsky. I joined the chorus in 2017 and retired in 2020 from AT&T. Uh, I sing bass, and uh, one of my claims to fame is I have survived singing with the Dapper Dans at Disney World, as David mentioned. So I'm now a card-carrying member of their fan club. <laughs> my name is Josh Resnick. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty young. Most of these people joined before my parents were the board. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. What about you? Uh, I joined up. Uh, I joined back up in about what, like four, three, four months ago now. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from UAB. I have my bachelor's in physics. Um, I sing lead a little bit tenor. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm Henry Compton. I'm originally from Tuscaloosa. I live in Birmingham now. 
I originally joined in 1983 because of this man here. So I uh, stepped out back for a little bit um, and I've got 27 years on my membership card and I sing lead. I'm Tom Kane. I'm a uh, technology project manager with Regions Bank. If anybody thanks there, I appreciate your business. <laughs> um, started uh, singing barbershop when I was 19, and on December 6th of this year, I'll be 69, even though I know I don't look it. Um, so I'll, at some point, Bobby, I'll be getting my 50 year uh, card. One thing, I, I sing bass, uh, though really I'm a baritone, I have to kind of get lucky on some of the low notes. But one thing I do want to point out, and I'm sure you've surmised this already, is that we don't make any money doing this. This is, this is our hobby, but we do it for 50 years or that sort of thing, because as David said earlier, we really do love doing it. It's just so much fun. Barbershop, we call it, I mean, it's, as much fun as it is, I, I hope for you to listen to, it really is a participatory sport, if you will. And you stand with a group, be it, be it a chorus or a quartet, and you, what we call, lock a chord and really. So we did lose some members. We had to be shut down for about a year and a half. There was, there was no singing. Uh, we did actually lose some members from that also. But uh, this, this is based on our chorus now, the Crimson Pride chorus. You can guess probably the name Crimson Pride came from, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we are very proud of our chapter because of the fun we have, the brotherhood that we have, our quartet championships that we talked about, the chorus that have won the district championship before. So we're very proud of our touch list. We may be we may be smaller number, but we make up for it with musical ability and with heart. And I'll be honest, I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna show you some show uh, programs that we did. Now this is one from March the 3rd, 1973. And you may think, well, why, why is that significant? Because on March the 5th, 1973, I was a, a senior in high school at Hill County, and I had a teacher who told me, she said, we went to a show this past weekend at the Bama Theater, uh, Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of the Barbershop Quartet Singing. I don't want to do that. I mess up. <laughs> For years, I didn't do it. Later, I heard the stack date singing Music Man down to Bama, and that kind of uh, got me interested in it. And then later on, my boss took me to the to our first meeting. And as Tom said, you ring that chord, and just read on me. It's just, just so much fun. Some other programs that we've done over the years, uh, these are pictures of this. This past few months, we did one live at the Bama Theater, a rocking radio show. Now that show, we did something very different. We opened up singing to an accompaniment track for Rock Around the Clock. Normally, we don't ever sing with instruments. The only instrument we have will be a, a pitch pipe to get us started. And sometimes when we're learning music, of course, we might go on the keyboard. Now, there are other chapters, much more to the number. Here's one in, um, um, in Dallas, Texas, called the Vocal Majority. And they present a tremendous wall of sound when they sing. So, if you want to sing barbershop, the point I'm making is you don't have to sing in a quartet. You can sing in the chorus. Okay? So, uh, this is the book majority. Here's one from Music City, which is Nashville. By the way, our headquarters is now located in Nashville, Tennessee, and that's the chapter uh, course from there. And this is, is another picture of our course and competition a few years ago. We just have great fun singing. Now, ladies, you also have an organization that you can join if you're interested called the Sweet Headlines. We're just singing them for, for a number of years. I oh, have two Sweet Headlines over here. So, so it's, not, it's just not for men. Other groups can, can, can sing barbershop as well. So look those up if you're interested in it. So we've talked about the society, we've talked about our chapter, but one thing we have not talked about is what makes barbershop, barbershop. And there are several things that we're going to look at. Now, if we look at the, at the song, My Country Tis of Thee, you look at it in your hymnal, that is how it would look. The melody is on the top line there, and then you have alto, tenor, bass, and you have a three, four time signature over there, and a key signature as well. But in barbershop, it's, it's, it's changed a little bit. The melody line, is the lead line is the second line down here. The top part, 
the best part is the tenor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then down here you have baritone and, and, and bass. And look also at the stem directions. One way you can tell if the stems on this clef are going up, that's a tenor note. The stems are going down, that's a lead note. Likewise for baritones and for, for bass. It's the same song, but just rewritten in the way we would look at it as barbershop. Now, um, one thing I mentioned a while ago, that time signature, three, four. Now you're used to three, four time, one like a waltz, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or a, a march time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Barbershoppers, that time signature means absolutely nothing. <laughs> we are interested in telling a story. And so we may rephrase the song for what is written, just to get the thought across. Uh, and we're going to sing one like that in just a few minutes, and I want you to hear the, the difference there. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now, guys. This song is called uh, Wait Till the Sun Shines Nelly. Now, I'm going to direct it for the, for the first part because we're not used to singing it this way. We're going to direct, I'm going to direct it just as the song is written. Right? Oh, well, <laughs> we're going to try. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is an experiment, OK? On a Sunday morn, set a maid forlorn with her sweetheart by her side. Through the window pane, she looked at the rain. We must stay home, Joe, she cried. There's a picnic, too, at the old point view. It's a shame. It Straight tempo, straight tempo. And that's how a, a, another popular singer might have sung it on stage. But we want to tell a story each time we sing. So we're going to sing the same song again, same notes, same words, same pitches, everything. But we're going to tell it more like a story. And we're going to continue the story in the second part. Yeah. On a Sunday morning, Saturday for Try to do. 
Now, um, Tom mentioned a while ago the something called an overtone, the expansion of sound. Sometimes it's called a fifth voice. One night we were watching NCIS, <laughs> and if you know the character Ducky on um, there, he talked about the fifth voice, and he talked about it being in barbershop. I was thrilled. I said, I think he's exactly right what he's saying. So we're going to give you an example, and what this what this means. We're going to sing the tag to a song we sang earlier, Wild Irish Rose. And listen on the last note. It happens to, uh, throughout the song, but you'll listen on the last note especially. We're singing four parts, but you should, if we match it correctly, hear a fifth voice, which would be an octave above the, the, the root of the chord. Like it was, I think it's a B flat, so you hear a B flat up higher, if we do it correctly. And I bet we do. All right? Uh, let's see. Where, where are you start? Start? Um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if we sing the whole song again? <laughs> Even if you mind, we're going to do it anyway, okay? All right. So that's the overtone that we try to create throughout the song. Thank you. But now, to do that, of course, you have to sing the right notes, but it has to be correctly balanced. On, on some of the chords, I'm not going to get too technical with it, but if one part is too strong, it can throw the overtone out. So it's got to be perfectly balanced each time. So it, it's an art form that is, requires work, but it still is a whole, whole lot of fun. Uh, and, and so there have been other quartets or other groups that would use barbershop style of music. <laughs> Anybody know who these guys are up here? <laughs> they had a younger brother who's not in this picture. His name was Donnie. Oh, Osmonds. They sang barbershop quartet music. I listened to a recording last night of them. They were almost like Sweet Adelines at that age. They were singing way up here. Uh, this was the Forest Freshman. And this, anybody know these guys? Beach Boys. Beach Boys, okay. A lot of their harmony is styled in the barbershop style. The melody is a second note down, and the tenor note is above that. And we're going to sing for you a song now uh, that they that they sang. Uh, it may be singing strange singing at this time, but it is November the first. Okay, so remember that. And we're going to sing Little Saint Nick. Okay, so they borrowed from barbershop. Now we can borrow from the from the from the beach boys. Okay, we're gonna say the same thing. All right, guys. Yeah. We're gonna try. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it under control, guys. <laughs> One, two. Merry Christmas. Every path with a little surprise. 
Christmas music and the one you just heard. If you want to hear it again, pay us ten dollars and you can do it. All right? It's going to be at the uh, Moody Music Hall, not the big concert hall, but the recital hall, Sunday, December the seventeenth, uh, two thousand twenty-three. Now, one other thing that we enjoy doing when we have competitions says we like to sing tags, and a tag is an ending to a song. Guys, how brave are you? <laughs> well, what we'd like to do, if there are any of you who would like to sing a tag with us, come on up, sing a tag. Come sing. We're going to sing two tags. <laughs> well, you're going to have the music up there for you, okay? This first tag is called When I Leave the World Behind. And only, if, you, if you sing melody line, all you have two, you have one word, behind. That's all you gotta sing. Uh, there it is. Uh, so Lise, show that for me. We can't know you doing it. Sing it for me, please. Behind. Oh, it's in England. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just the lead part right now. Lise, ready? Behind. And you hold it for him. We're gonna do it in, okay? So if you wanna sing, we do it again. I don't know. I'll tell you what, you be the That's just a tag, and when we go to competitions, you will hear them everywhere. There's a group over here singing a tag, a group over here singing a tag, a group over here, a group over here. Not singing the same tag, by the way. And it is just, it sounds like a, a mishmash, but it's just pure hell. I'll be honest with you. We're gonna sing one other tag, and I know you know this song. It's from a 1939 movie called The Wizard of Oz. Over the rainbow, okay? So it's just, if hang the little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why oh why can't I? Just like Judy Garland sang it. All of you who know this song, so let's sing that. Big fat button. Everybody sing. If happy, I already started. Ready? Okay, ready guys? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow. Okay, now I mentioned the show a while ago. One other thing I want to mention is we have rehearsals every Thursday night. So guys or ladies, if you know some guys who like to sing, we meet just down the road, two blocks from here, at First Christian Church on Thursday nights uh, at 7 o'clock. 
Uh, Paul, 627 Paul Bryant Drive, Southwest Alabama 35401. So we would love to have you join with us. In fact, we've got some guys who are joining with us for the Christmas show, not doing all the songs. They're doing like five songs. Christmas in Dixie, Little St. Nick. Yes. Um, Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Oh, oh, yeah, White, White Christmas. Christmas. Oh, yeah, that, that Irving Robert Lane song, or White Christmas. <laughs> uh, and so there's five songs you, you can sing. You're welcome to sing all of them if you want to, but we would love to have you join with us this and every Thursday night down at First Christian Church. Now, when we have a rehearsal every week, we end uh, a song we end by singing a song, Keep the Whole World Singing. When I first started, it wasn't it keep, the, keep America Singing? Yeah, and then we changed it because we grew. So now we keep the whole world singing. So we're going to end our session today by singing, keep the whole world singing. Okay, yes, please. Keep the whole world singing. One thing I forgot to mention a while ago, uh, those things I mentioned about the, the way the music is written, uh, the overtones, the voice placement, and the, the meter, those are things that you can see that how, they, how they make a barbershop. And one thing you can't see, and I hope we've expressed this today, is the fun of it. <laughs> we just have a good, these, these are our best friends, and we have great fun singing together, and especially great fun singing for people. Y'all may not realize it, but you were smiling. And so when you were doing that, you're just feeding us, I mean, you know, you're paying us. So, so it's, it's, it's a fun, 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 fun hobby. And now I'll shut well, up. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. I cannot remember a program that we've had that everybody was smiling the entire time. <laughs> you know, if they can't sing, and I'm sure a lot of them were sitting there wanting to sing, too. So thank you all very much. Isn't it a great pleasure to have this oh. one? Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. Um, Want to yeah, remember their program that they'll have, and I'm sure we'll have them back at some time in the future, and maybe something to a bigger audience, too. So uh, thank you all today. I, as I told David, I didn't think anybody would be this unhappy if we got through a little bit earlier. But if you have any questions, I'm sure they'll stay around for a few minutes, and you can exactly. ask them. So see you. Remember, you'll get your catalog in the mail in the next month. Remember Land Yap? when you get ready to take your classes next year. So uh, in the meantime, have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. And remember the show. Yep. <laughs> exactly.